That afternoon, as I pedaled into Kelowna, I had an incredible sense of something being right. As though I had all the time in the world. Finishing up laundry here today. Um, I'm gonna go look at a place in West Kelowna. Uh, I've been able. To, there's Bear Creek Campground, which is right next to West Kelowna, and uh, I've been able to hop around to a couple different spots without actually having one here by um, relying on cancellations, which has been really nice. Um, so we're gonna go look at a place where I can have a dog too. My sister um, bred her boxer, so that I got a puppy, and uh, this place. Um, and the ads had must love dogs. So um, this is a really great opportunity. And uh, we're gonna see how it goes. Things didn't really work out very well for me on this at first. I got a little bit nervous. It took two weeks for them to accept my application and ask me to move in. But by then, a lot of things had changed already. See, all of a sudden I had time to do things like open Facebook, talk to people on chat, and other things that had been a luxury while up in the mountains or in the wilderness. And in the process, I found out the friends that I had made at Prayer Group were not that far away. They were visiting friends in Salmon Arm, and they invited me up there. So after a few days of stewing about it, I decided to go. Davis is going to come pick me up, and we're going to go um, catch up with um, his wife, Rena, and their two kids, and uh, Jonathan, John, and... Uh, Danielle and and uh, and their two daughters.
The next day, John and Davis helped lead the Sabbath school. Others sang, and I got to tell the children's story. Today we're going to talk a little bit about faith. Um, when I was four years old, I was in the most trouble I'd ever been in my whole life. And uh, my mom stuck me by the front door, because I had a stick, you know, in the corner, with my nose in the corner. And I kept telling my mom, my mom, there's frog legs sticking out from underneath the door. And she says, well, you're in the most trouble you've ever been. I've been a big brat that day. So I had to stay there longer and longer and longer until I've been there for 45 minutes. Finally, I turned around and I said, no, Mom, really, there's frog legs sticking out from underneath the door. So she came over and she opened up the door. And uh, there was a frog. Um, now, I don't want to bring us down with the details, but um, you know what a slug looks like when they get smashed. So his stomach had been split open and he was smashed all over the doorstep and his eye had popped out. And um, My mom was just feeling terrible because she made me sit there with the frog legs for so long. And, <laughs> So she looks at my grandmother and she says, okay, well, go get a paper towel from the toilet. I look at them and I'm just thinking, they're crazy. I'm like, Mom, why don't we just pray? And she's like, well, it doesn't work like that. You know, Jesus has more to worry about than a little frog. I'm like, if you're the one that told me about the sparrow, finding its home, and the number of hairs in our head, God knows all this stuff. And I see my mom looking at me like, great, you don't know what death really is. <laughs> and she was really sorrowful. Like she, could, she just, you could see it in her eyes, you know? And... So she tried to reason with me a bit more, and she just realized it wasn't going to happen, because I remember in that day in my head, I just, I, at, at Sabbath school, we had just learned about the faith of the mustard seed, and that's really where this conversation I think started. But I said, well, we just have the faith of the mustard seed, and we'll pray. Which is part of our conversation. Um, if we can move a mountain, then it's just a little frog. So finally I figured out, they weren't going to be able to convince me that it wasn't going to happen. So it was an old farmhouse, and it had the green, wavy... Uh, fiberglass, and so I had a green tint to it, remember, so it was a summer day, and we all knelt down on the porch, and I looked at my mom, and I said, well, are you going to pray? Because my mom always prayed first, and she said, no, we're just going to leave this one up to you, so I pulled my hands, and I closed my eyes, and I said, dear Jesus, please help this little frog, he didn't mean to get smashed, thank you, amen, and towards the end of my prayer, I hear my mom go, and I open my eyes, and I see a breathing frog over the wet spot where his guts just were, on the doorstep. My mom kept her eyes open because she didn't think anything was going to happen. And she watched this go. Now, that's one story. But we're going to take this a little bit further to when I was in high school. I was going to Laurelwood Academy, an Adventist Academy in Oregon State in, in, in the United States. And um, I was a freshman, and there was this guy who was kind of rowdy, and he was a, a junior. And I borrowed his like $150 Oakleys, and I had no money to pay anybody anything. But I was going to go skiing on Mount Hood in Oregon State. And that's one of the biggest ski mountains I've ever seen. I mean, you can seriously ski for half an hour and still not get to the bottom of it. You're going really fast. So here I am skiing throughout the day, and then all of a sudden I realized that the glasses were really sore. And I took them off, and then the rubber piece in the middle had fallen off somewhere on the mountain. And so I would turn to the person who was on the chair with me, and I said, well, what am I going to do? Like, I can't pay this back. He's going to be so mad at me. And, like, this is going to ruin my whole day. And we didn't know we were going to do it. And then, you know, but there was the frog story. And my friend knew about the frog story. So we got off and waited for our other friends. And there was, like, six or seven of us. And we're on the top of this mountain. And my friend explains, they want to tell the frog story because they're all excited now because we're going to pray about this. And we're going to find it. So they go ahead and tell my friends the frog story about how we prayed in the past. And so all today, all we had to do was pray again. And we'll find the little nose piece in a big, huge ski mountain. And so they're like, I guess, okay. You know, they didn't really think it was going to happen. But these two of us were like, certainly, like, it, was, it was more like I felt kind of forced into it. Like, I've got to pray about this one because I don't want to get in trouble with this guy. So um, we all knelt down with our snowboard still on in a big circle, and we prayed. And then we just kept skiing. And towards the afternoon, the guy's roommate comes in. Really, really tall guy. He'd been skiing by himself all day long. He didn't know about the prayer. Nobody else knew about the prayer except for all of us. And he says, hey, he says, are you missing that, that piece to the glasses that goes right in the middle? He's like, I don't even know why I stopped in the, in the mountain. He's like, I just stopped. And he says, I seriously went, why am I standing here? 
And I looked down and there was the pieces, <laughs> the, the glass, or the, the piece of the glasses. And that was because God answered prayer. It was through faith. But sometimes we have to fall out on hard times. You know, with the frog, it was the frog that was hurt. And I, I felt bad for it. I spent some time with it in the corner, <laughs> you know? And uh, sometimes we have to fall on those hard times before we need to have the faith come out. But when God is ready, and when those times need to happen, you know, in Job it says that God says one thing and another, yet man does not perceive it. So often God has more than one thing to accomplish, so he can be glorified. Not just for our sake does it happen, but for his sake do these things happen. And so when we fall on hard times, when there is a time where everything seems perilous, those are great times to depend on faith, because God will be there for us. He does do it even today. Hey mom. Hello? Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so so there's like a few things to talk to you about. Um but first and foremost is is the frog. Um because you were there. Yes. Yeah. I watched it. So <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. Um, okay, so, yeah, it's just, um, you were there, there was another person who was there as well, um, and both you and I are convinced that, um, one of the reasons that this even happened was because that other person was there, and their family had fallen into, you know, further than even doubt, um, and so God could be, God's name was glorified, I believe, and, and that, uh, that miracle happened, um, Absolutely. Um, also, like, you know, in the Bible it talks about, like, God bringing stuff to pass. So even the person who has the faith to do that, like, you have to seek him and learn about him and all those other things. But, like, when you do that, then, then when the time comes for that miracle to happen, it's like you have that faith because he puts the faith there. So ultimately it's like him doing it, you know. It's always him, 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 God, you know, it's not, it's not us. Um, which is so cool because I think that takes some weight off of us to think, like, Oh, well, why can't I step out and have faith like, like that? Well, maybe not yet, you know? Because um, I know that also that, just because somebody has great faith in their life does not mean that they don't suffer and they don't have like, bad stuff happen. Why doesn't, you know, why doesn't the prayer work right then? Well, um, maybe because it's not the right time, you know? God can be glorified. It says all things work together for good for those who love the Lord, right? So, um, yeah, I, I just, I don't question it, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 for me, even at a young age, like, I still was at awe that, you know, this had actually happened. So. Yeah, but the, the encouragement, the encouragement that that left and the impression on your mind um, left a, a huge, um, for you, as you went through life and to look back at it, because I know, didn't you go through a time when you were just like, no, you know, I kind of went through that, that period in your life where, 
Yeah, I mean, you know, there was that there was a time when I didn't believe at all, right? And so, like, what I what? what I did is I went and convinced myself that you must have had another frog. But the the, the impossibility is is that we were standing inside the house, um, and then we piled out to the front porch. We didn't go anywhere. We knelt down and we prayed. So, right there, um, there's no there's no way for that to happen. Not only that, but think about all the other miracles. Like, um, I can think of one that's really fast. Um, uh, Ty Gibson, um, his son lost uh, his favorite knife at their friend's ranch um, in Montana, um, and he missed it all year. And so, on the car ride the next year to go to their friend's house in Montana, he was just talking about his knife, his knife, his knife. Like, as soon as we get there, we gotta pray. So, as soon as they got there, and the other boys ran over and, and said hello, they said, "Okay, we gotta we gotta pray about the knife." I said, "Okay." So they all knelt down and they prayed, and when they were done praying, they opened their eyes and. Their dog had run off somewhere while they were praying, and he had the knife in his mouth, and he dropped it out of his mouth. And those people said they had not seen it the whole the whole year. They didn't know where it was at. They knew it was missing. They kept an eye out for it. And you know, it's those little things that happen not only to, to just to us, right? But but have happened to other people. That um, you know, it, I had to I had to go to doubt my own mother. You know, to to the point um, there was it was pointless because. Um, I knew better, but that's what I was using. What was an excuse to keep my pride? And, and, well, I, I think it's good to make sure you just act on one thing. Yeah. Um, Okay, so I've got that. You just reminded me of one more. Um, when I was camping out at the coast in um, Vancouver Island, I was at a beach. I was, it turned out I wasn't supposed to be at. So once I figured that out, I left. But um, I camped 100 yards away from a cougar and the baby. Now, I heard the baby that day because some blue jays were going crazy in the trees right above them. And it tried to do the cougar growl, and it couldn't do it all the way yet. And it was the cutest thing you've ever heard. But what's really strange is right over there where they are, it was in a big log jam from from the um, the storms in the winter time, and they were actually the tr the logs were going all the way into the trees. Well, there was a creek right there, um, ten meters, ten yards, fifteen, twenty at the maximum, um, less than that, uh, from from the creek. I went to the creek and the water was a little bit salty and I went to go to climb up onto the logs and I got, I, I stepped a few logs and all of a sudden I got so incredibly tired. I got so tired that I could not walk into the woods. I shook my head and I seriously, I said out loud, that's weird. And I, and I walked back off those logs and I went over and I started setting up camp. A couple hours later, I heard the baby cougar. Had I walked into those woods right there and over those, those logs, the mother would have attacked me. Now, the oh. mother's paws were bigger than the palm of my hand, um, yeah. and the sand, and they were so big. I just, and then um, a mile or so away, I ended up finding their prints, just the mother and the baby walking along. Um, so I know that they were there. Uh, but honestly, it just the fact that I got so tired and could not go into the woods that saved my life, or at least saved yeah, it saved me from you know. Um, yeah. 
an injury that would have been very severe, you know. So. Well, you probably wouldn't have made it, you know, with the known cougar attacks, you know, here in Washington State that happened. And yeah. Even when I lived up in Fort Hardy, um, they, there were cougar attacks. And, and, you know, those cougars are very smart. And, um, you know, if you don't have the proper uh, defense um, on you, you, your survival is pretty much not going to happen unless God steps in and makes a way for you. You're right. I, um, I, did, I wanted to say one other thing right before, you know, um, this ends, is that uh, God is a God of comfort, and He will comfort us and encourage us all along the way to just keep us going until our next opportunity where we're just depending on Him, because we always, you know how you go through life and then you forget, and, and, and it's just the Bible, at least you forget where, the, where I've led you, but He just gently, you know, helps us along the way, I think from childhood up through our adult life, giving us these, these encouragements. And, you know, one thing I wanted to tell you is, Don, when I lost your father when you were six weeks old, uh, it was the most devastating thing that happened to me in my entire life, probably in anybody's life that loses a loved one that's so dear to their heart. And I was broken, and my heart was so crushed, and the pain was so unbearable. And I was in the Fort Hardy Seventh Day Adventist Church at your dad's memorial. And I was sitting there numb. And a light, the light from the sunshine came through. There was a narrow window, you know, on the sides of the church, how they had these little narrow windows. And that sunshine, it, it got uh, right through the window and it was right on me. And that warmth made me feel good. And all of a sudden, this most peaceful the feeling came upon me. I can't describe it. If I could, if I died today to have that, and I knew that was God, I would be so overwhelmed with with joy. Because when that peace came upon me, this voice, it was like my voice, it was right behind my head, right in my ear, and it said, do not fret, you will see him again. That has kept me going throughout my whole life. Whenever I get down and I get discouraged, or or I I remember the promise that He made me, and He's not going to tell me I'm not going to make it to heaven if He's going to tell me that, <laughs> that I'm going to see your dad again, right? Yeah. And so yeah. and, the, and, and so I think through troubled times, God gives us these huge faith builders so that we can go back, like Israel, they went back and went over how God delivered them from Egypt. And he went them through the Red Sea, and then when they were in the wilderness, and he fed them, and he healed them, and, and then when they were bit by the snake, and they looked, they were to go over all of these things and recount them so that their faith was built. And I know that's what he does for us today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mom, let's, let's pray, I guess, real quick before, before you go. Yeah, absolutely. Of a better world. Where there is no night And the Lamb is the light Where no teardrops fall Oh heaven, it's not like here at all No, no In the language of Canaan I could tell a little of the glory mm, Of a better world The wonderful things the Lord showed me of heaven I cannot describe I saw there tables of stone in which the names of the multitude of the redeemed were engraved in letters of gold. After we beheld the glory of the temple, we went out and Jesus left us and went into the city. Soon we heard his lovely voice again saying, Come, my people, you have come out of great tribulation and done my will suffered for me. 
Come in to supper, for I myself will serve you. We shouted, Alleluia, glory, and entered into the city. And I saw a table of pure silver. It was many miles in length, yet our eyes could extend over it. I saw the fruit of the tree of life, the manna, almonds, figs, pomegranates, grapes, and many other kinds of fruit. Then Jesus said, You must go back to earth again and relate to others what I have revealed to you. Then an angel bore me gently down to this dark world. Sometimes I think I can stay here no longer. All things of earth look so dreary. I feel very lonely here, for I have seen a better land. Oh, four wings like a dove, so that I could fly. Away, I'd sail across the river Jordan ooh, to a better place where there's sweet repose and the living water flows, and I'll thirst. to reach your shore Oh, that I could talk in the language of King I could tell a little of the glory of a better Tell a little of the glory mm, of a better world, of a better world, of a better world.